Two Supreme Court cases could upend the rules of the internet. Section 230 is on the docket and it could change content moderation as we know it. Let's dive into the details, shall we? The Supreme Court could soon redefine the rules of the internet as we know it. This week, the court will hear two cases, Gonzalez versus Google and Twitter versus Teme, that give it an opportunity to da drastically change the rules of speech online. Both cases deal with how online platforms have handled terrorist content, and both have sparked deep concerns about the future of content moderation uh, algorithms and censorship. Section 230 and Gonzalez versus Google. If, if you've spent any time following the various culture wars associated with free speech online over the last several years, you've probably heard of Section 230, sometimes referred to as the 26 words that invented the Internet. Section 230 is a clause of the Communications Decency Act that shields online platforms from liability for their users' actions. It also protects companies' ability to moderate what appears on their platforms. Without these protections, Section 230 defenders argue the Internet as we know it couldn't exist. But the law has also come under scrutiny the last several years amid larger reckonings with big tech's impact on society. Broadly, those on the right favor repealing Section 230 because they claim it enables censorship, while some on the left have said it allows tech giants to avoid responsibility for the social harms caused by their platforms. But even among those seeking to amend the, or dismantle Section 230, there's been little agreement about specific reforms. Section 230 also lies at the heart of Gonzalez v. Google, which the Supreme Court will hear on February 21st. The case brought by family members of a victim of 2015 Paris terrorist attack argues that Google violated U.S. anti-terrorism laws when ISIS videos appeared on its YouTube's recommendations. Section 230 protections, according to the suit, should not apply because YouTube algorithms suggested the video. I don't know, but they, I mean, on the contrary, it's just an algorithm. No one had suggested it for them, really. It basically boils down to saying platforms are not liable for content posted by ISIS, but they are liable for recommendation algorithms that promoted that content, said Daphne Keller, who directs the program on platform regulation at Stanford's Cyber Policy Center during a recent panel discussing the case. That may seem like a relatively narrow distinction, but algorithms underpin almost every aspect of the modern internet. So the Supreme Court's ruling could have an enormous impact not just on Google, but on nearly every company operating online. If the court sides against Google, then it could mean that online platforms would have no change or to change the way they operate to avoid being held liable for the content that is promoted on their sites. The Bipartisan Policy Center, a Washington-based think tank, explains. Some have speculated that platforms could be forced to do away with any kind of ranking at all or would have to engage in content moderation so aggressive it would eliminate all but the most uh, banal, uh, least controversial content. That doesn't sound good. I think it is correct that this option will be the most important Supreme Court opinion about the internet, possibly ever, University of Minnesota law professor Alan Regenstein said during the same panel hosted by Brookings Institute. That's why dozens of other platforms, civil society groups, and even the original authors of Section 230 have weighed in via friend of the court briefs in support of Google. In its brief, Reddit argued that eroding 230 protection for recommendation algorithms could threaten the existence of any platform that, like Reddit, relies on user-generated content. Section 230 protects Reddit as well as Reddit's volunteer moderators and users when they promote and recommend or remove digital content created by others, Reddit states in its filings. 
without robust Section 230 protection, Internet users, not just companies, would face many more lawsuits from plaintiffs claiming to be aggrieved by everyday content moderation decisions. You know, it, it, this does sound bad, and I see where Red is coming from, but if they weren't too aggressive in the first place, they wouldn't be facing this stuff. Well, I don't know. Maybe they would be. I don't know. This The cases are about, like, terrorism. So, Yelp, which has spent much of the last several years advocating for antitrust actions against Google, shared similar concerns. If Yelp could not analyze and recommend reviews without facing liability, those costs of submitting fraudulent reviews would disappear, the company argues. If Yelp had to display every submitted review without the editorial freedom Section 230 provides to algorithmically recommend some over others for cons uh, consumers, business owners could submit hundreds of positive reviews for their own business with little effort or risk of the a penalty. Meta, on the other hand, argues that a ruling finding 230 doesn't apply to recommendation algorithms would lead to platforms suppressing more unpopular speech. Interestingly, the argument would seem to play into the rights um, anxieties about censorship. If online services risk substantial liability for disseminating third-party content but not for removing third-party content, they will inevitably err on the side of removing content that comes anywhere close to the potential liability line, the company writes. Those incentives will take a particularly heavy toll on content that challenges the consensus or expresses an unpopular viewpoint. Twitter versus ten. Tem Ney. The day after the Supreme Court hears arguments in Gonzalez versus Google, it will hear yet another case with potentially huge consequences for the way online speech is moderated. Twitter versus Tim May Tim Ney and and while the case doesn't directly deal with Section 230, the case is similar to Gonzalez versus Google in a few important ways. Like Gonzalez, the case was brought by the family of a victim of a terrorist attack. And like Gonzalez, family members of the victim are using U.S. anti-terrorism laws to hold Twitter, Google, and Facebook accountable, arguing that the platform aided terrorist organizations by failing to remove ISIS content from their services. As Well, I mean, I guess they kind of have a point if they're removing, like, other types of people. Why aren't they removing ISIS? I guess there is a fair point to make in this certain case. But, yeah, generally, I wouldn't think they'd be held liable at all under the law if um they weren't removing other people. You know, if it's illegal, fair enough. I mean, ISIS is way more illegal than, you know, a lot of other stuff they've removed. As with the earlier case, the worry from tech platforms and advocacy groups is that a ruling against Twitter would have profound consequences for social media platforms and publishers. There are implications on content moderation and whether companies could be liable for violence, criminal, or defamatory activities promoted on their websites, the Bipartisan Policy Center says of the case. If the Supreme Court were to agree that the platforms were liable, then greater content moderation policies and restrictions on content publishing would need to be implemented. Or this will incentivize platforms to apply no content moderator to avoid awareness. And as the Electronic Frontier Foundation noted in its filing in support of Twitter, platforms will be compelled to take extreme and in speech-chilling steps to isolate themselves from potential liability. There could even be potential ramifications for companies whose services are primarily operated online. If a company can be held liable for a terrorist organization's action simply because it allowed that organization's members to use its products on the same terms as any other customer, then the implications could be astonishing, Vox writes. So what's next? It's going to be several more months before we know the outcome of either of these cases. Though an analysts will be closely watching the proceedings to get a hint of where the justices may be leaning. It's also worth noting that these aren't the only pivotal cases concerning social media and online speech. There are two other cases related to restrictive social media laws out of Florida and Texas that might end up at the Supreme Court as well. 
Both of those could also have significant consequences for online content moderation. In the meantime, many advocates argue that Section 230 reform is best left to Congress, not the courts. As Jeff Kozeff, a law professor at the U.S. Naval Academy who literally wrote the book about Section 230, recently wrote, Cases like Gonzalez challenge us to have a national conversation about tough questions involving free speech, content moderation, and online harms. But he argues the decision should be up to the branch of government where the law originated. Perhaps Congress will determine that too many harms have proliferated under Section 230 and amend the statute to increase liability for algorithmically promoted content. Such a proposal would face its own set of costs and benefits, but it is a decision for Congress, not the courts. Yeah, this is really interesting. I think, you know, where this goes next, um, Congress and the courts should be kind of careful because you don't want to ruin the Internet, you know. But at the same time, I think that some of these companies are, you know, using 230, you know, to juggle what they want to do and what the law actually is. So I think more people should file suits. These ones are interesting. They're not about removing content. They're about other stuff. Um but what's your opinion on this story? Please let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to this channel for daily news updates. Hit that notification bell and share this video to help spread the news. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.